Happy Mother's Day, everybody. It's Nico El Magnifico to the rescue again. We need intercooler piping, so let's just get this over with so I can finally get this car finished. I had a nice collection like this myself and I ended up giving it all away. I had T-clamps and intercooler piping that I inherited from other used car builds. And Oh man, I don't know if we're gonna find what we need here, but fingers crossed and a little bit of uh, elbow grease and real grease, baby oil, coconut oil, slip and slide. Okay, let's try that. I'm optimistic. One more thing we're gonna need, our turbo is not water-cooled, so we need to get radiator hoses from an NA240. Nice thing is that they're affordable, they're cheap, and you can get them just about everywhere. Yeah, they're busy, I'll just do it myself. Here we have what I need. Yeah, there's a little bit of flexibility in these clamps here. Of course I need to rotate this to face down because it's not going to clear the hood as cool as that would be to just cut a hole out and have a blow off valve there. This needed to be like a 15 degree bend so we couldn't find pipes to do that. We're using the couplers to bend that for us and I'm just eager, I'm not rushing but I'm eager to be finished with this so we put in the non-turbo radiator hoses. You don't need that one over there, just, just the one over here, the lower hose. And then of course the pipe here that goes to the reservoir. Also a common spot of leaking in the reservoir is inside of that dimple there. So the casting likes to fail there. And of course I need to put in the mass airflow sensor and all that goodness underneath here. And then that filter will go that way. I'm gonna show you how these cheap little three-way valves work for controlling boost. It's basically Turbonetics has a very common one. This is like a $6 cheap manual boost controller and basically what it is is it's a needle valve and it's got a spring in there so you can adjust it and it'll hold that adjustment position instead of using a lock nut this needle valve the way it works is takes boost signal from the turbo you can see actually back there on the turbo here's the nipple that's going to control boost um, right at the source of the turbo and then the wastegate is at the bottom that's got a nipple on it as well this goes in line so it'll go in line right here and so this third port on the bottom is where you vent the excess pressure to get more boost so if you were to cap this you're basically sending direct boost to the wastegate solenoid so that way you're not controlling boost at all so if you tighten it to the right you would think you're getting more boost but you're actually going to be getting less so it'll be kind of rated at the factory PSI on that wastegate actuator. If you were to go counterclockwise, it opens it more and it allows more air to bleed through the bottom here. And as air bleeds through the bottom, you lose the pressure to the wastegate solenoid, therefore increasing overall boost. You can vent this to the atmosphere. You don't want to do that because, of course, it's going to be a big amount of air. And so the way I'm going to mount that is plumb this to the intake, this bottom port here. So we're, get, we're recycling that air and I'm going to install this and plumb it and that should be our last big thing here then i gotta do the clutch cable and the fluids one more thing i wanted to document is the use of a little elbow there on that joint where it goes into the radiator down into the bottle everything's just been real custom with this it's really frustrating but hey some of the stuff you gotta deal with when you're having fun like this the big turbo so i hope that turbo lasts a while mm, it'll be fun it's an ebay turbo what do you expect really yeah right like i tell you now after all this time but no, we, we knew that ahead of time. So the last thing to plumb in would be the blow-off valve. Needs to go there on the intake. I have one more port, I think, somewhere. <gasps> I hope so. I'll have to find something to make it work. It is um, about 20 minutes after 1 o'clock. thought it was going to be four hours to get this thing up and running. It's been five. Moment of truth. Here we go. Super nervous. Fuel pump's not going to kick on until we get spark. Sounds okay. Do we even have any gas in this thing? I'm getting oil pressure. I like to see that. I should probably put a jumper pack on our battery here. Let's go check our coil. Make sure we're getting spark. Volvo-forums.com 
It's got a great resource on how to diagnose the LH2.2 no spark, no start situation. Basically these things require spark to activate the fuel pump. So first they'll start cranking and sparking and then the computer recognizes, hey, we've got sparks, so let's kick on those fuel pumps and we'll fire up. That's why bypassing your fuel pump relay isn't always a good idea here because you could basically flood the engine, which I used to do a lot when I was doing my LH 2.4 swap from a K-Jet car. And I know I sound tired, it's like 2.30 right now. And I found the issue, it was the connector here on our Bosch distributor. Thankfully it's not a, whatchamacallit, uh, Chrysler. And the wires are just really brittle, so what you're seeing there, those threads are the big ground is kind of threaded all around the harness there but the blue wire in the middle and the red wire were both broken and everything was touching everything. So I reconnected them, kind of rudimentary um, and basic for the moment to get this car started so I can roll it out of the garage here and clean and get ready for another week. And uh, to double check that you're getting spark, you can jump the middle one with the left one, which will be the black. And like I said, volvo-forums.com, great resource on the whole flow chart. Flow charts are my favorite because you don't have to deal with a bunch of opinions of people. Well, maybe check this, maybe check that. Uh, uh, hold free on. So, all right, let's get to it. Um, it kicked on the fuel pump right away so when I jumped those two wires. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that back in and see if we start up. Hopefully this does it. Nope. We're not getting 12 volts to the red wire there. But you can tell that it's totally junky in there because as you wiggle this connector with the ignition on. There it's making spark, that's that ticking you're hearing, and the whining of the fuel pumps. I think it's just constantly firing the fuel injectors. Uh oh. Okay, that's enough now. Relax. Okay. Yep, still at it. Okay, I found the fault. You follow that up further and eventually you get to another break in the wire. It's not too far up, but that's where the red wire is disconnected. So it's possible it's getting a full 12 volts. It's just inconsistent. So I'm going to fix that wire and try again. The wires are uh, temporarily fixed until we can get a new harness. Not a full harness, but like a connector. Let's try it now. Fingers crossed. Oh baby, right away. Whew. Let's get this thing on the road. It feels good to finally close the hood. I think I put 50 hours in this week on that engine swap. It was nuts. Let's go for a drive. Holy cow. There is a reason I didn't want to know what time it is. It's 5 a.m. I stayed up all night again, and then some. Oh boy, let's get out of here. Let's go get some gas, and let's see how this new turbo works. All right, there's our boost gauge. Oil pressure's looking good, everything's all right. Clutch. Clutch is all right. Hitting the firewall.
smoking pretty good there on the turbo. And there it goes. Well, at least the clutch works. And the power steering pump works too. Ah! Let's see if we can unleash some power without destroying our car. You know, amazingly, it idles better with the, with this whole thing disconnected. But let's leave it that. Uh, we'll hook it back up and go for another drive and see how it pulls. timing is still off it's hesitating a lot we'll have to work that out in the meantime getting this dang thing out of my garage that stinking glove box man <laughs> oh gee it's pretty wet today you know what I mean oh uh, better be careful on some of these turns or I might just uh huh, lose a little traction oh geez I went to AutoZone today, I got the uh, wheel bearing for the BMW because it makes a sound and I don't like that sound. So the wheel bearing guy at AutoZone, there were two of them, two wheel bearings, and he pulls out one and I say, oh, it looks like somebody's been hammering on this one. And he says, oh no, they're car parts. What you expect them to be clean for? And I says, oh no, they're dirty. Get the other one. And he throws me some attitude. Man, I tell you, these AutoZone guys, oh geez, they don't know what's going on. 57 minutes left on my phone. Soren's gonna drive by really slow. <sighs> nah, he's gonna do it fast. He lives in you. Hey, ya, uh, I'm away, ya. Uh. He lives in me. The engine's running up and down the street. You can hear the exhaust rattle. Was that rattling the exhaust? The downpipe? A little bit. Oh, she died. No, I turned her off. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I think I forgot to tighten the nut on the back side of that. Die. <laughs> 